All right. Hello, you guys. Welcome back to EXP Family Tree. We're excited to have you here. If you are joining us from somewhere else, welcome. Or if you're watching us later on YouTube, we're glad that you're watching the video. Today, we have some really cool information coming to us. We all take listings. We all have to market our listings through video, uh, video tours, um, and, and photos. And that is really the first showing of a property. So today, we have Rachel Gombosh with us, and she is actually going to be talking with us specifically about some strategies around the listings that you take and how you can leverage your photos, right? Your photography and some of the other things in your marketing of your listings. We always say this to people, to realtors, and it's so true that if you can carry the inventory, the product that we sell, which is the actual listing, the house, you're going to have so many more opportunities to grow your business. And if you don't take full advantage of that, you aren't going to be able to grow your business to the level that you could, but you should figure out how to take full advantage of the product when you have it. So that's why we always say you have to list to exist. That's been around the same. The reason why. So Rachel is the community and content managing uh, marketing manager at Virtuance. And I've been on her Curb Appeal podcast in the past, which is a real estate marketing podcast, by the way. I also... Um, have had her on here speaking about some other things. And I wanted to have her back because she has a unique perspective coming from uh, the industry that she does. And so what we thought would be good is to talk specifically about this because I think this is great timing as well, uh, Rachel, because the reality is, is that in many markets, listings are sitting a little bit longer and we need to make sure that the first showing, which really is online, is the best that it can be. Um, and then how do we fully take advantage of the fact that maybe these properties are going to, um, you know, sit on the market for a little bit longer. And that's okay, by the way. That's actually not a bad thing because we're getting back to a more normalized market and it's going to help you level up your skills in the way of marketing the product that we sell as realtors, which is something that you will be grateful for in many, many years to come. So without further ado, Rachel, please uh, fill in the blanks if there's anything that you'd like to share about your company or yourself. We'll make sure we chat that in the chat box and let's get into what you've got to share with us today. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much for all those kind words. I'll have to pull that podcast episode. So everyone has access to it afterwards. Cause it was one of my favorite episodes <laughs> that I think I've done because even just my takeaway from it, so much value. Um, I still, to this day, implement some of the ideas that, that Carrie chatted about, uh, mm -hmm. on that podcast episode, but I digress. I want to make sure that <laughs> I fit within our window, but thank you, Carrie, for that wonderful introduction. I'm going to share my screen real quick. I've just got visuals to go with the presentation because we all know that's really important to include are, are those visuals. Um, so we're going to be talking about how to optimize your listing photography. So in short, it's how to get the most out of your professional photos, right? This is an investment for you. You're spending money um, investing in these images to market these listings. But I want you to know that the, the images don't just serve their purpose on that active listing and then they go away, right? Like you didn't just do that one thing and now they're done being used. You can use them for so many other things outside of just that active listing or even during that active listing that help further um, promote visibility and get more eyes on the prize to help you sell your listing faster and potentially even for more money. Um, so that's just a little bit of a preface of what we're going to be talking about today. Carrie did a phenomenal uh, introduction of myself, but yes, my name is Rachel Gombosh. Um, I'm the community and content marketing manager. It is a mouthful. Um, feel free to just refer to me as marketing manager if you want. Uh, it is, like I said, it's quite a title, um, but it encompasses everything I do, uh, everything community-based and providing these educational uh, content resources and information to professionals all across the country um, and all of our content resources that we can provide as well. So that is me. That is who I am. I do have one thing I want to share with you guys though, just because we are so thankful for Carrie um, providing us this opportunity. We are giving you all an opportunity to win a free uh, shoot with us, a free HD real shoot. So I am going to put a code or a link in the chat real quick. I'll put this in the live stream too. Okay. Let me find, there we go. That's what I want. Aha. Okay. So I just put the link in the chat. 
Um, but you can also feel free to use this QR code. It's going to take you to just a quick form um, to fill out. So that's going to give you access to 20% off your next shoot and a chance to win a free HD Real 25 image package. So we'll make sure that we do that announcement after this. Um, or after this presentation, I'll let Carrie know who the winner is and we'll select that and that will be added to your account, which is really awesome. Um, so just wanted to provide that to all of your all of you professionals out there as a resource, um, since we are talking about professional photography and how important it is. So with that, just to cover um, who we are as a brief introduction and to really just qualify um, myself and why I'm able to have this discussion with you all. So, the company I work for is called Virtuance. We're a real estate photography and visual marketing company, and we are devoted to offering the world's premier real estate visual marketing solution. Um, so day in, day out, we are striving to provide all of you real estate professionals with consistently stunning images um, and also marketing resources that are going to help you win more listings, sell your homes faster, save you time and money, improve your brands, and advance your overall marketing through scientifically backed professional photos, 3D tours, floor plans, and other visual solutions. So a quick session overview. Um, we've got a couple different things I wanna cover. It's going to be a lot of information, but hopefully it's jam-packed with a lot of really good value for you all. Um, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is just why you should invest in professional real estate photography. I know we all do it, but there's a couple facts I wanna throw out you that are kind of staggering uh, to think about that I think are really important. Then we're gonna talk about how to prepare uh, for the best listing shoot results. So in order to optimize your photos, you got to prepare for that shoot to make sure that you do have really awesome quality images at the end. Um, so we're going to talk about how we can best equip you for that. And then we'll get into how to optimize uh, your professional photos in just four easy steps, um, which is really nice. And then we'll have a summary and closing for anyone who has any questions. So with that, Let's go ahead and just get started on why we should be using professional photos. So I know it is so easy to just immediately grab for that smartphone. Um, it, it's got a super lovely camera. I love taking pictures with my smartphone, uh, but it's not for your listing photography. So before you grab your smartphone, I want you to know that you can grab more attention with professional photography. Uh, when photos are taken by a professional photographer, that can significantly help you sell your listings faster. And it can also help you sell your listings for more <coughs> money simply by just choosing to go with a professional photographer. So agents who use professional real estate photography actually make double the average gross commissionable income compared to agents who do not. So keep that in mind. Um, the value here is really your commission as well. So you are amping up that opportunity simply by using professional photos. Not to mention 95% of real estate agents reported adopting the use of professional real estate photography in our 2023 real estate marketing trends report. Um, and ultimately what that means is if you are not using professional photography yet, you are definitely falling behind. You're in that 5% out of all of the agents out there, that big competitive market who isn't using photos, right? 95% of agents are using professional photos. But some of the points I want to bring up here are that Photos play into human nature. So 90% of what our brain is taking in is visual. Um, it's visual in nature. So you want to make sure that your visuals are ready and best equipped to catch a potential buyer's eye. So it's proven that homes with professional photos get 61% more views. So keep that in mind. We're visual creatures. Why not play into that? Next, it's what buyers want. Your buyers are, your potential buyers, they're literally asking you to please include professional photos. 86% of buyers are saying images are the most important factor when they are searching for properties online, according to sources like Redfin and Inman. So you have to be able to tell your property story without using words. And that's where these visuals and these visual solutions come into play. This includes understanding how photography factors such as composition and lighting and order um, and editing all play into that story at the end of the day when you get that photo. Professional photographers, they understand these factors and they tie all of this together to you know, position your property to catch that potential buyer's attention. They're prepared for it. They know how to market your property. This means the professional images are going to be able to tell the story better than a smartphone. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, not sorry, right? 
Um, so just keep that in mind. It's, it's something that your buyers are literally asking you for. So why not give it to them? Next, you've got a limited amount of time. Um, I've got some additional stats to throw here, but you've got two seconds to grab a buyer's attention without a phone out, photo. And you have about 20 seconds. More recently, it's less than that when you do have imagery. Um, so keep that in mind, two seconds to grab their attention. So sellers are looking uh, for real estate agents who can market their property in the best way possible in order to close and make the most money possible, as I'm sure you want to be able to do the same, right? So agents top um, to go marketing strategies include hiring a professional real estate photographer for every single listing. Um, consistent real estate photography is going to help you build out that referral network um, by providing the same valuable marketing strategy to all of your clients across the board. So keep that in mind. Um, when your promotional techniques remain consistent between listings, you're more likely to keep and nurture long-term clients. Regardless of the price, you're showing that the value you're bringing to the table with these professional photos and how you market your listing is the same. And then finally, it helps you to build a standout brand. Um, as a real estate professional, your brand is everything. It's so big. And this is where your visuals can really help play into that. So I want you to just think about your favorite online retailer. Um, so the first thing you'll probably think about or notice is that they are using professional photography for every single property or property, every single item uh, that they're shooting. If it's a $5 pair of socks, they've got professional photography for it. If it's a $300 purse, they've got professional photography for it, right? The product photos are always high quality and they're always consistent across the board, which is by design. They know that by using professional photography um, as a powerful marketing tool, that this can lead to more consumers to click on their products and essentially make that purchase at the end of the day, right? They're playing into that buyer psychology. Um, they probably wouldn't sell as much if they were using not high quality photos um, and also not consistent photos as well. So all of these types of companies understand that images you see on their websites directly represent their brand. Um, the same goes for you in real estate photography. So this is going to help you with that overall brand consistency and how you represent yourself. Just keep in mind that this is that direct representation of you. So how are you visually representing your brand? So I want to talk about listing preparation. Uh, so this is really big and really important. So a key element, right, to having great photos uh, that can be used past that listing life is not only um, hiring a great photographer, but it's also preparing your property for a great shoot. Uh, so real quick, what I want to do, I've got one more link for you guys that I'm going to send in here before I talk. This is for a pre-shoot checklist, just to preface, you know, uh, once I get into this. So I'm going to bring up a couple points. That checklist that I put in that chat is going to have a lot more different options um, on how you can best equip and prepare your property. But I just want to go over three, I think, that are really key and important to bring up. One, depersonalize it. Remove all of the personal stuff. Um, the purpose is to help your potential buyer imagine themselves in, in that home, in that space. And that's really, really, really hard to do when someone else's stuff is all over the place. Um, so as much as you can, try to remove things like personalized magnets, photos, um, kids' artwork from the refrigerator. I know that's a beautiful art display, but anything that someone else, it might distract from their experience in viewing the home, try to remove that as best you can. It's going to help potential buyers to build an emotional connection to the home by doing that. Next, keep it clean, keep it bright. Um, so make sure your yards are clean, cars are out of the driveway, garage doors are closed, uh, clear off your countertops of anything that's non-decorative. Um, if available, you know, you want to make sure you're placing anything that could be obtrusive to the views of your photos, um, remove those from the tables. Or in addition, make sure you're adding things that can really add quality to the photos, such as fresh flowers, bowls of fruit, um, pottery, vases, anything that's going to add um, a nice element to the space as well, right? We want to keep it clean, keep it bright, but not add too much so that it's a lot of clutter, right? Make it look like the home is a fresh and clean space. And then this last one I want to talk about, I think is really important, is to 
respect and inform the neighbors. Um, this is really, really important, especially if you're doing like aerial photography and video and you're going to have a drone flying over, um, just respect the neighbors um, in the sense of letting them know, just give them a heads up, let the next door neighbors on both sides of the property know about the scheduled shoot so that they can just ensure maybe their yards are clean, um, maybe their cars are out of the driveway and their garage doors are closed. This is again, gonna be just really important for drones and really just, I think adds an element of, we respect you um, and we want you to know we're gonna have drones coming in to fly over to shoot some aerial photography or we're gonna just have a professional photographer come in. Would you please mind um, maybe removing, right? Removing your car on the driveway, out of the driveway. Um, it's just a simple notice, that's all it is, but it makes a really big difference uh, at the end of the day when you get those photos back. So again, if you want more details on the checklist, um, I included that in the chat. So please feel free to download that. Um, it's a free download. Feel free to take that and use that for any time you're preparing a property. It goes through a lot of different details, literally every single room, how you should prepare it. So it's a really good resource for you guys to use. So finally, how to optimize those professional photos. Um, so your professional real estate photos, like I said before, they're an investment into your properties um, and they're an investment into your business. So their value doesn't just stop at the listing website. Once the home is sold, you can do so much more with your photos afterwards. Uh, you can continue to use your professional photos to support your business efforts and build your lead pipeline um, as well, right? So there are many ways to optimize your photos, but I do wanna go over four that I think are really um, quality ways to just optimize your photo usage. One, treat every home the same. <laughs> this is huge. Um, so conventionally, it's perceived that maybe a million, $10 million listing deserves a lot better marketing than maybe say a two or $300,000 listing or starter home, right? you should not adopt this mindset, especially when it comes to how you're marketing your properties and the photos. Um, a high price listing does not necessarily deserve marketing than better marketing than a lower price listing. You should treat them the same. Uh, your clients and you also deserve to have the best real estate listing images to market uh, the homes you're showing, no matter what the perceived value is. Additionally, with 96% of home buyers looking at houses online, the way you visually market your listings is going to be critical to standing out from the crowd. So if a seller sees that maybe you're only using professional real estate photography on higher end houses, um, they may not trust you to have the best tools and best equip their home to sell if maybe their home isn't that higher end house, right? This is where you need to treat every home the same. Like this is where you're building trust with those potential seller clients um, that no matter what listing is thrown your way, you treat every single one with the respect um, and visibility you want to see it have. So great, as you know, great brands deliver consistent messaging and product. I talked about that previously, but make sure that you are also delivering the same quality and consistency across the board for your clients, as well as treating every home exactly the same. Um, so that means Again, make sure you're always using professional photography. You're, you're staying consistent with your marketing resources because then when you start to build that portfolio of how you market your listings, you can come really equipped, especially to those listing presentations to say, listen, here's the $10 million home. Here's the $300,000 starter home. We market them exactly the same. That makes people feel really valuable um, knowing that in your hands, they're always going to be taken care of with the same quality as anyone else. Next, you're gonna use these photos to build your sales enablement toolkit. So consistent high quality real estate images are not only going to be important to build a client's trust, um, but professional images are going to help you to build that sales enablement toolkit down the line. So I know you hear about building this uh, robust marketing strategy, but you also need to have this robust sales toolkit, uh, especially when you head into listing presentations or you meet with property investors, or maybe when you meet with ancillary businesses um, to work on the expansion of your own business, right? You need to be able to showcase that you're more than equipped to uh, bring value to the table through this robust sales kit that you're building. And this is where your photos really come into play. Cause again, it speaks to how you market your properties and how you take um, these properties to market. And your listings can help you do that 
through a listing presentation, right? The human brain, I, like I said before, we are visual creatures. So we are processing visual information 60,000 times faster than text. I absolutely said that right, 60,000 times faster than text. Uh, furthermore, I just wanna point out that when it comes to retaining information, people actually only recall about 10% of what they hear. Um, so you need to be able to have visuals to back up what you're saying. Bring those photos in, bring that proof in to say, I'm not just telling you how I market my properties, I'm showing you how I market my properties. Here's a mock, uh, you know, here's a mock, marketing kit of how I would take your property to market. Showcase the quality of the images you use. Showcase how you can tell a property's story. Additionally, you can build that sales enablement toolkit through a comparative marketing analysis. Um, so your potential client wants to be able to walk away with the most money possible for their home. And of course, as do you as well. Um, so providing a comparative market analysis is a really good way to just set expectations um, before you're hired in, right? So this is all part of building that sales enablement toolkit. This is where your photos come into play. And this is an example I really wanna bring up in this is that through that market analysis, you're obviously finding homes within that area that have sold and you're comparing them to the home you are hopefully about to sell as well, right? So the way your photos come into play here is you need to think about, okay, well, this is how much these homes were sold for, but maybe they didn't use professional photography. And this is where our professional photography can elevate you to that next brand, right? This is where you bring previous um, real estate listing photos in to showcase in the market analysis of, hey, like here was maybe when I took over a listing and before the previous agent didn't use professional photography and it sat on the market for who knows how long. And now we came in and we brought in not only professional photography, but 3D tours and floor plans and everything to create that really immersive experience. And we were able to not only sell the home faster, but we sold it for more money than it was listed for, right? So think about those things um, and consider those types of situations when you're bringing those listing images into the comparative market analysis. And then also too, uh, you want to think about the printed material you're leaving behind. Um, so again, we only retain about 10% of what we, what we hear. <laughs> so it's really good when you've got something to leave behind with someone and say, Hey, I just talked to you obviously for 10, 15, 20 minutes, maybe an hour. Here's a bunch of material so that when you see it, you know, that we had this meeting and all of the different things we talked about. Right. So make sure that you're leaving behind physical visual examples of your marketing strategies. Um, again, such as listing brochures or maybe postcards, if that's how you decide to market your properties to really drive the point home with your client about how you can capture and market their property. So these materials, again, um, should showcase the professional images that you're investing in that you've used previously on other listings to showcase how um, another property was maybe sold or to prove a point was sold for more because of how you marketed it. Um, so keep all of those things in mind. Third, we're going to use our images for our marketing materials. This is not the same as your sales enablement materials. Uh, they are very similar, but they are not the same. Um, so keep that in mind. So clients can more easily recognize your business uh, when your real estate branding is consistent across the board. That also includes your images, right? Um, so you want to make sure that you are providing consistent professional images every single time. Um, so keep that in mind because that's, again, a representation of your brand. So this will help you be an agent that a potential seller considers um, when they're ready to sell or maybe a potential buyer when they're ready to buy a home because you've got that consistent brand and you know how to present yourself. So marketing materials like social media templates, uh, brokerage booklets, open house flyers, they can all draw significant attention to your business and can be and can also incorporate those images again that you've invested in. Um, so keep in mind, it can be used for all of these different promotional materials uh, and it should reflect your brand and all be somewhat uniform again, to showcase that if someone sees it, there's a natural trigger of saying, oh, I know exactly who that brand is um, because you're consistent across the board. So specifically talking about, we'll say social media for right now. Um, think about social media as that like visual resume. That's how I always like to refer to it as uh, for the community to look at. 
I'm sure at some point I could probably bet we've all turned to social media, whether it be Facebook or Instagram or TikTok um, at one point or another, when you just want to look up a business real quick, we don't as much go to the website anymore, as much as we turn to social media. Um, that point can further be driven home by the fact that 81% of uh, people are on Instagram uh, alone, and they use that to research uh, on use re use for research on companies and products and services. Right? We're using these social media platforms as search engines. So even your branding down on those platforms is going to be so important. So when we talk again about images, when you post a home on your Instagram account, um, people can easily see any consistencies. They can easily see any inconsistencies or discrepancies between marketed properties. So keep that in mind. It's one thing to do maybe a brand shift, but it's a whole other thing when you're actually inconsistent um, with the brand that you're showing people. So using consistent professional photos is going to help you um, to easily display how you consistently, again, can take properties to market, how you consistently brand yourself, how you consistently market. Um, and this is just an easy win. It's all about consistency, right? We hear that day in and day out. It doesn't matter. You just got to stay consistent. Um, so keep that in mind. You can even use old listing photos uh, to help you share testimonials. Maybe it's a picture of an old listing photo with the headshot of one of your clients and an awesome testimonial to serve as social proof for you that you're then sharing on social media, your website, all of these other platforms. Um, so think about how you can incorporate your images in those ways. How can you take old images, bring them back to, to then use as, as social proof, right? Additionally, you can also use your website. Um, so again, as I mentioned, most people are looking online uh, or on social media first when they're trying to look uh, not necessarily just you up, but really any business in general. Um, but that doesn't mean they don't go to your website. So that's still really important for you to make sure that you are maintaining that brand consistency. Um, so you want to make sure you're keeping your brand and your images um, and your imaging universal. No one wants to see one image portrayed on social and then they turn to your your website and it looks like a whole new brand um, because maybe on the website it just hasn't been upkept and there's inconsistent image quality or outdated images um, so on and so forth so just make sure that regardless between social media web you know your website any of your marketing materials that you're actually using all of this as your online and or in-person portfolio so you want to make sure it's consistent across the board having really good consistent professional photography is going to be really key here as well. And then the final point I wanna bring home, I think is really one of the most valuable points, even though it can be a really in-depth topic. So I wanna to try to keep it as uh, not general as possible, but just to make sure that instead of getting too into depth about SEO, uh, how you can actually use your photos, or maybe if you've got someone who's managing your website or managing your social media, how they can use your photos to op be optimized by SEO. Um, so I'm sure you've heard of optimizing your website uh, for social media and SEO purposes, um, but did you know that you can actually optimize your real estate images? You can actually optimize the images themselves um, to help you get a better reach online. So let's first talking about, let's first talk about just web-sized images. There's a couple different ways we can optimize for search engine optimization. Um, and for anyone who may be unfamiliar with search engine optimization, it's essentially how, like if you go to Google and you type in um, a real estate agent near me, it's how Google populates, right? So there, Google's on there searching for everything, trying to find the answers to your specific prompt. So what you're doing is you are optimizing then your website or your social media so that you can be the one who Google sees as answering that prompt uh, for someone. So just a little bit of background on SEO so everyone's on the same page. So web-sized images. Um, search engines are going to give priority to images with fast page load times. Has anyone ever gone to a website and it took 20 minutes for the website to load? I have one too many times. Um, you want to avoid this at all costs and your images play a really big role um, in your page load speeds. So you don't want to post images uh, to your website or if you run a blog to your blog that are massive in size, because what that's gonna do is that's going to slow down your website speed and Google and these search engines are going to ding you negatively, um, which results in lower rankings when people try to search. 
and you don't want that. Um, so websites, images, and preparing your images to be websites is really easy. Uh, the optimal image web size is 72 DPI, which means dots per inch, which ultimately speaks to the resolution um, of an image. If you do find yourself needing to resize um, images, there are plenty of online tools uh, for resizing that are even free. Um, there's Windows Image Resizer. I know Adobe has one. Um, if you use any of the Adobe tools, they've got a really good image resizer as well. Um, but additionally, just as a plug for, for us and for Virtuance too, um, for any photos we provide to you, we provide them to you in web-friendly formats, print-friendly formats, and formats even custom-sized for your MLS. Um, so that way you don't even have to worry about downloading them for or resizing them for web-sized images. Um, we already provide that to you to help boost your SEO. Um, so your image size is really important when you're optimizing your photos for search engine optimization. The second one to talk about is keyword richness. So when we talk about the search engine and how it's, you know, populating its answer for you, it is looking for a series of keywords. And so you want to make sure the content you are putting out there is keyword rich and has all of those keywords in it um, that are going to ultimately help you to rank. So we can actually add those key, that keyword or keywords that you're looking for, potentially it's just the address of your property um, into things like the title or the image name, um, simply how you just literally rename an image, alternative text, which I'll get to in a second, and then overall just titles. So think of this as where imagery itself is flipped. So computers cannot see. Um, so you actually need to describe an image. Um, in order for a search engine to find you, your business, your content, it, it's relying on reading keywords um, because it can't see any of your photos, right? So this is where you can really come in. Um, there are a couple of ways to add, as I mentioned, keywords to your image. The first thing we can do is actually rename the image. Um, it's okay if you've got long file names, um, you can add just keywords or phrases to try and include maybe geographic locations. But honestly, I think the best way for you guys to start is when you're uploading images to anything, whether it's your website um, or wherever else, your blog, wherever else you're putting it, name your image as the property address. Um, that's going to be huge because maybe someone's looking for a property listing in Austin, Texas, and now your image is SEO optimized for Austin, right? Because it's got that image name or that Austin name right in the address. Um, again, we're just trying to feed Google to say like, Hey, like you're looking for Austin listings. I've got all the Austin listings, right? That's what we're trying to do here. Um, so just some other general neat renaming tips, as I mentioned, addresses are just great to use and start out with highly recommend just starting there. Um, tailor the name to maybe what someone is searching for. Uh, so this is, I think speaks more to maybe if you are writing a blog, um, and maybe your blog is for first time home buyers and a checklist for first time home buyers that they can refer to. This is where you can plug the name in to say, you know, first time home buyer checklist and you name your image that. So again, Google picks that up, um, that you have content that's related to something that maybe someone is searching for under that topic. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you think about it in the sense of what, what would someone be searching for that I want to answer their question to? That's a good way to think about SEO um, and how you are renaming your images as well. And then additionally, just the last um, tidbit piece, which is more so just a housekeeping piece. When you are naming your images, it's gonna be one long image name. Um, but if again, you're doing a property address, separate it by the dash instead of an underscore. Um, that just helps with readability as well. So those are just some general tips um, to go by. Additionally, when we talk about adding keywords to your image, we can use something called alternative text. So when you're adding an image to your website or your blog, uh, you're given the option to add alternative text, um, which originally was created for people who actually were visually impaired so that a screen reader could read the description of the image. So just a little fun fact for you. Um, however, now search engines have really quickly indexed this as um, a part or an important part of SEO. So we're including it in this conversation. Um, but you can actually find alternative text options through what, whoever your web host is um, through there, or even on social media. I know Instagram specifically has an option to add alternative text before you post, um, which is really cool. So again, just use that alternative text to describe the image. Single family home in Austin, Texas, 
um, two stories, three bedrooms, however you want to, to describe that image to again, help um, any type of search engine pick up that post. And then finally, we talk about the title uh, and renaming the title. So titles of images are also indexed by search engines. Um, when you're adding any types of titles to your blogs, websites, Facebook, anywhere else, um, again, giving anything a keyword rich title can help the search engines pick it up. Um, so that really goes alongside with renaming your images as well. And then finally, um, I think this one's actually a really cool kind of topic to talk about when we talk about SEO. Um, it's a different way. It's not necessarily tied directly with the technicalities of SEO that I had mentioned before, but simply watermark your images. Um, it, it's giving you credit where credit is due, right? So ultimately when it comes down to taking credit for those images that you've invested in or that property that you're trying to sell, saying that you are the assigned agent for it, um, watermark your images because I know you're sharing these images across all of these different platforms. And what if I come across a photo that's this beautiful home and I don't know where it came from. <laughs> this is where if you um, have a really good opportunity to generate more leads um, just based on your images, simply by watermarking them. Um, because this is something too, to think about if I see your image and I, and I don't know where to go, I don't know that you're the agent selling that house. Maybe I'm in the market and I come across it, but I don't know the source of where that image is. Um, so watermarking your image ultimately comes down to just you taking credit for where credit is due. And it gives you a better opportunity to generate more leads um, online when you're sharing all of your listings in that digital space. And at the end of the day, it's really simple to optimize your images, I promise. Um, I know I covered a ton of information today, um, so I'm happy to address and answer any questions uh, that anyone has, but providing professional real estate photography for your listings, again, is one of the simplest ways um, that you can shape your brand and your real estate business. The key is to just treat it like an investment um, and to let these images actually work for you past the life of just the listing itself. Um, so high quality photography can actually help you generate leads. It can help you market your brand and deliver a memorable client experience at the end of the day. So you want to make sure hiring a professional photographer is something that's crucial and it's part of your routine. Um, whether you're a single real estate agent, whether you're a managing broker, or maybe you're managing, a, you're part of a property management company, it's all the same. Your, your listing photography is crucial um, to that marketing process. So professional real estate images can really just elevate your business. Um, and your brand and offer consistent high quality, offering consistent and high quality images for your clients and potential buyers is just a really good way to get you um, that next step and that next bump in, in the market. Um, and real quick, just to close out, we can help you. Uh, again, we're a real estate photography and visual uh, marketing company. So there's a reason I'm, I'm here to be able to talk to you about all of this and can provide you a lot of different statistics and everything. Um, so not only are, are our images proven to receive two times more clicks than other professional photographers, we have scientifically backed images. Um, we did an eye tracking study that actually showed where people were looking when they were looking at a series of images that then developed our image processing software called HD Real, um, which helps to just provide consistent high quality magazine quality images every single time, no matter who is shooting your property, which is really nice because it provides that really nice um, nation nationwide reach between our photographers as well to help you build that consistency um, with little effort on your part, which is great, right? Helping helping take that ease off of you guys. Um, but one thing I do just wanna point out is our Virtuance Marketing Suite. It is our all-in-one marketing platform and our content delivery system that can ultimately help you to generate more leads, review analytics, um, and also help you with those image optimization efforts. So for example, you are going to get a single property website with every set of images we deliver to you those are automatically optimized, um, those websites for SEO purposes uh, to help you get that reach and visibility that your listing deserves. So won't go into too much details over that because I know we're running out of time and I do want to make sure that I open it up for any questions. But with that, just thank you guys so much for allowing me to join you on this mastermind. Um, this is a topic I really enjoy. So I'm excited to be able to provide any other feedback or additional information to you. So happy to open this up for any questions. Yeah, <clears throat> let's do that. Jen, did you have a question about uh, keywords? Are you able to unmute? Yeah, so I 
for the search engine optimization and like using keywords for your photos and stuff. So I bought the little add-on, the key, it's keywords. I think that's what it's called. And it okay. like you, you type and then it will show like, hey, this is how many people type this word in or whatever. I didn't know if that's what you use to help come up with your keywords or... Yeah. So there's a lot of different tools, uh, to search for what keywords. So, um, whatever tools work best for you, obviously is the tools that you want to be able to go with search engine optimization can be a really heavy topic. So I think whatever, um, works most efficiently for you and your business that you can incorporate into your day in and day out activities as well is going to really help. So for us specifically, we use programs like SEMrush or SEMrush. Um, there's a program called AREFs. Um, there's also Google analytics. There's actually a really great platform. Um, that's I think free for a couple prompts a day. It's called answer the public. Yeah. Um, have you heard of that one? Yeah. That's yeah a good I, one. Use, I use that one. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I love answer the public. It's just a really good way of getting to see what people are actually saying. Um, but there are such a variety of tools out there. Um, Ultimately, it's going to come down again, don't want to get too down, down the SEO rabbit hole, but it comes down to your keyword difficulty. Um, and then the other word I'm totally blanking on right now, but essentially, um, it's how many people are prompting for that specific search or that specific keyword, and then how difficult it is mm -hmm. to actually rank for it. Um, so keep that in mind. So when you are thinking about keywords, the best way to start, I would say, is really start small in the sense of you want something with a really easy keyword difficulty um, and you want something that is also a lot of people are maybe asking about, right? Um, because I think at the end of the day, like you want to make sure that any type of content you are creating for SEO purposes is actually going to rank, right? So if you've got something that has a keyword difficulty of hundred, which is literally the hardest keyword to rank for. And you try to start creating content around it. It's going to be really hard for you to rank, um, for that content. So all that to say, it's actually really good to start locally. Um, so start as localized and as niched down as possible. Um, when you talk about anything SEO, cause that's going to help build out your foundation, um, for any type of ranking on Google. So as anytime you can get super localized or really niched, um, again, maybe you focus on first time home buyers, maybe you focus on, um, luxury market, right. Anytime you can do that, do it, especially in your SEO practices. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Uh, any other, there was a question, how do you claim and take credit? I think she was probably talking about the watermark, which I think you kind of uh, cleared that up, but basically what you meant by taking credit is putting a watermark of like your website domain or something like that on your photos, right? Yes, correct. So obviously when we talk about watermarking, I don't mean put a big old, here's my, here's my uh, email in the middle of the photo, right? We don't want to ruin the quality of the photo. Um, but usually in the corner, you can see, maybe you add your logo, if you can fit it and it looks nice, add your headshot and then your name and your contact information. Um, because again, if I, if that gets passed, if that gets shared from one person to the next, to the next, to the next, and all of a sudden I come across it and I'm looking and you're in Austin and I'm looking for a home in Austin, I know to contact you because you're selling a house and you've claimed it, that you are the agent selling that house. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so obviously you don't want to ruin any images, but make sure that you take an opportunity to provide that contact information. So if it does get shared anywhere, um, someone knows where to find you. Love it. Any other questions? <laughs> Unmute yourselves. Anything or any comments? I thought it was great. Good information. I had, um, you know, one of the things when you started talking, I started thinking about was that um, when the market starts correcting, right, our listings, our photos, our listings should be able to, we used to say anyway, that our listings should bring us at least four transactions, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so if we're not um, kind of cross-marketing mm -hmm. our using those photos, I mean, I think that's a great, um, that's a great way to do that, you know, to help yeah. us yeah. to capture buyers with our listings, yeah. right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. also and you guys also can use 
Whoa, I don't know why I'm echoing. Can you guys hear that or is it just me? I don't know what's happening. Um, also, you guys can use um, your photos for Google My Business. Um, you know, you need to add so many photos to that as well. So if you've got a really cool shot of maybe property, you know, land, or even if you take a, a drone um, picture of like a neighborhood or the park or a certain area, these are the kinds of things that you can actually really optimize. And that helps your SEO for your Google My Business page or, you know, uh, Google My Business as well. And you're supposed to be adding so many photos to those. So you know, it's just thinking like, what, what is our plan? What is the checklist we have every time we get a listing and what do we do with all these things? And so adding watermarking in there, adding, naming your photos, adding maybe every listing, grab one of the photos that makes sense. If it does put it on Google, my business where, you know, what else can we do to just utilize these photos, especially if you're, you're paying for them and they're beautiful photos, you mm -hmm. should optimize that. So this was really, really good. Rachel, do we have all your contact information in the chat box? Let me add this here. So you guys grab the checklist. Um, I also put it in the EXP family tree under this live stream. I'll grab Rachel's information and put it here as well. I've had a lot of people have some great success uh, utilizing these photos. If they're doing um, you know, a lot of business, they're able to really kind of leverage this a little bit so they don't have to uh, do everything on their own. Um, and if you have a good system and a good company that does the photography, but also understands how to market them, that makes a big difference. So you may or may not be finding that in your current relationship. So you might want to give it a shot and see if there's a difference there. She is giving us all a 20% off, which is awesome. So thank you for doing that. I didn't know that. And did yeah. we have somebody as a winner or are we waiting to, um, I'm going to wait till afterwards. Cause I have to go in and see who all registered. So you'll so tell me. And, and then, then I'll also, tell you and you okay, can, cool. it. we'll also notify the winner as well. So, okay. um, if you are selected, you'll get an email from us saying you've won, but I want Carrie, Carrie to be able to know too who, who won as well. Yes, I will post it in the EXP family tree, but don't let this fall to spam or check your spam. So for some reason, somebody doesn't see your email, I'll, not, I'll notify everybody on EXP family tree so they can look for that as well. Awesome. Very, and very cool. My contact information in there. If you guys have any questions on any of our services, um, we provide everything visual marketing. So we can do professional photos, videos, um, 3D tours, floor plans, aerial photography and video. Um, so we're more than happy to help you if you are looking to transition from one photographer to the next or just wanting to try something new. Um, just go ahead and contact Virtuance at, or info at virtuance.com. We're happy to get you set up. Uh, really excited to start working with you guys. And additionally, if you want to talk to me about maybe even presenting to your specific brokerage or whatever, and you've got a topic in mind or just want me to re present any of this information, um, you can reach out to me at rachel.gombosh at virtuance.com. So happy to help. Yes, she would love to do that. So if you've got a group that you're getting together or anything like that, I might have you um, talk to my group in person to via Zoom. So we'll be, we can all reach out to Rachel if you've got a group of people that you'd like her to talk. And she can talk about other things too. Yes. If you want her to get a little bit more into SEO, if you want her to get into a little bit more of these things, uh, you know, these are all topics and we'll bring her back for more of that throughout the summer as well. Awesome. Thank you for being here. It's great to see you again, Rachel. Thanks everybody. You guys, um, we are going to, um, if you're part of the, the growth collaborative, don't forget tomorrow, Thursday, 10 AM Pacific for our, our 30 minute group coaching, bring your numbers for accountability. Otherwise we'll be back here on Monday for our revenue share huddle. So if you want to make some calls and want to talk best practices, we had a great call this week, please join us on Monday. And we'll see you, of course, back here next Tuesday and Wednesday for our masterminds too. Thanks everybody. I'm posting all of the links in the XP family tree that Rachel is posting for us as well. Awesome. And I just reposted that link um, to win a Virtuance photo shoot. Awesome. So feel free to make sure you register for that. Um, and thank you guys again so much for allowing me to join. It was such a pleasure. Uh, and Carrie, I can follow up with any other information or tidbits if anyone's got any other questions. Perfect. Um, yes. Reach out on the post. If you guys have questions or need something, reach out on the post and I can connect you with Rachel. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Have Thank a great you. day.